Hi guys, as many of you know, I am making a road trip from California to Alaska in just a few days. I'm leaving on June 7th and I will be gone for about five or six weeks. So in this video, I'm going to give you a way to plan and prepare for such a trip. It is a huge undertaking, but I will do it two ways. I will tell you what you probably should be doing as far as time frame is concerned. And I will also tell you how I'm doing it. I'm sort of a last minute girl, um, but it's not necessarily reckless because for the past six months, this trip has been on my mind every single day. And I was just planning, deciding, preparing in my mind. And I really didn't put anything into action until two months maybe even more one month <laughs> before the trip. And you might say that's a little bit irresponsible, but usually it works for me. Step one, the first thing you need to decide is where you're going to go, who's going to go with you. Are you taking a friend, a significant other, a spouse, or you're just going by yourself? And if you are taking any pets. You also want to decide the time frame, if you are flexible or you are on a strict plan, for example, I'm a teacher, so I have the whole summer off, and if I'm gone five weeks or eight weeks, it doesn't really matter. But if you have only two weeks vacation from your job or three weeks, or especially if your spouse only has so many days, then you need to figure it out. And then you need to keep in mind that you will have a strict deadline for most things. And I would say that will drive the way you plan things. You also want to decide how you're going to camp along the way. There are many different ways to do it. You can tent camp. You can also uh, kind of roughing it even more. You can just sleep in your car if you have a big spacious car or truck. A lot of people do that. You can tent camp in national forests, which is free, but you have to have the whole setup. Or you could camp in developed campgrounds. Some people might ask. Some people might also want to throw in a hotel here and there, especially if they're tent camping, which is really not that comfortable for a month. So you want to plan that. Or there's another way to do it is you have a an RV, a fifth wheel travel trail or anything like that. You either have it or you borrow it or you rent it. So these are the things you want to decide ahead of time. I would say a year to six months. Now, I've only decided that I'm doing this trip six months ago, about December or January. And my original plan was simply that I will tent camp along the way. I have a pickup truck. I have everything I need to camp anywhere. And I decided to just take one dog. I have my oldest German Shepherd. He's pretty mellow, always by my side, never have any problems. I had another one, Zima, and I was going to leave her home because it's a little bit more annoying when I camp. She barks when she's on a leash and she likes to run off. So that is not a good thing to have while you're on a foreign land, right? So these were my plans. Your next step as time goes on, but still about a year to six months, you probably want to figure out your route, where you're going to go, the locations you're going to stop. Some people are super strict about it. like So they kind of freak out if they don't have everything planned out so that's not a bad thing at all that means you will have probably no problems but you want to map out where you're going to go where you're going to camp what places you might want to visit and you want to reserve campgrounds so this means you will have to know exactly what day you arrive and what day you leave and pay for it so you have to really stick to this plan. Otherwise, it's a waste of money. And the reason you want to do this six months ahead, because a lot of campgrounds fill up really quickly, especially in the summer, especially if it's a really popular place. I haven't done any of this. I knew where I was going and I knew that um, at least in the United States part, California, Oregon, Washington, I took one look at the map and I saw that there are national forests along the way I can pick and choose. And I knew I could just pull over, find a good spot and camp for the night. So that was my plan. I'm trying not to stay in a campground unless I really have to. What I decided was that I wanted to see national parks along the way. And I did buy an annual pass to all the national parks in the United States. It's good for 12 months. I bought it two months ago. 
and it was $80 and it would be great because if there's a national park along the way I could just go in for the afternoon and then go on my way and not feel like it's a waste because usually the entrance fee is $30 and it's good for seven days and if you're only going in there for an afternoon it's kind of a waste of money but this way it's not so I did that and that is basically what I want to see along the way just national parks camping pretty places and just make my way to Alaska not really rushing but enjoying the journey as well as the destination at this point you probably also want to figure out how many days is going to take how many miles you have to drive just just so if you have a plan especially if you are on a strict deadline now this could be maybe three months to six months before the trip I have decided about three to four months before that tent camping is probably not the best idea because it's okay to camp in the forest for a weekend and use the bushes for the bathroom and not have a shower. But if you're talking about a week, even four days, five days, a week, a month, six weeks, you don't want to do that. At least I don't. So my only choice was that I would always camp in developed campgrounds with a shower, with a bathroom, which is not every campsite. And I would have to make reservations way ahead of time. They will cost money. And if I miss that deadline, then I'm out of that money and I will have nowhere to camp. So I started thinking maybe I could buy one of those little pop-up trailers and often they come with a bathroom, just something very basic. It's, it's fine for me. This way, it would really help me out. And I wouldn't have to look for a campsite. I could just really camp anywhere. So once that thought got into my head, I was really sold on that. So I started looking. Month before my trip, I actually bought a travel trailer. It's practically new, 2018. A lot of money, but it feels like it's a house. At this point, what I did, I looked at the map and it was about 3,000 miles, a little bit more, one way from California to Alaska. So I figured, okay, 3,000 miles, I plan on being there in 10 days. That should be comfortable. That means if I'm driving with 50 miles per hour, then I have to drive six hours. That's 300 miles a day. 300 times 10 is 3,000. If I can go with 60 miles, then it's only five hours. So I will be driving five to six hours a day, which is not a lot. I could wake up in the morning, six, seven o'clock and leave and stop by one o'clock and have the whole afternoon and the whole evening to explore the area. So this sounds like a good plan to me. Of course, I'm not really tracking the hours. I will be keeping a close eye on the mileage and I will track that so I don't really... Um, stay behind and the main reason for the rush is because in Alaska I will go on a bear hunt and the time frame is only June 15th to June 30th and I plan on being there by June 17th or 18th so any day after the 15th I'm losing a day to hunt so this is sort of why I had to put myself on a deadline but I still did not want to rush too much the next thing you want to do, and you probably want to do this about three months before, of course, I did it one month before, is to check on your vehicle. My truck, I took it to my mechanic. He serviced the transmission, got me new brakes, I'm getting new tires, and I also had an oil change, and he said my truck is good to go. As far as my dog, what happened was in February, so this is about four months before my trip, I adopted another German Shepherd, so now I have and three of them. And this one was a little baby. She was only nine months old. Super needy, super cute. You know, she's very young. I knew I couldn't leave her home, so I was going to take her. Her name is Misha. Her and also, so two dogs to go, one to stay home, which didn't really change a whole lot. And then about three weeks ago... I, just, I felt so bad. I felt so bad leaving Zima at home. That dog is so sweet. She's just a little trouble on outdoors, but she's so sweet. And I decided, you know what? I will take all three of them. And that kind of changed everything, but it made me feel so much better. So about three months before, which of course for me, that was one month, you want to check on your pets. You want to take them to the vet, make sure they're okay, make sure they have their shots. And if you are traveling through Canada, you have to get papers for them. 
it cost me at my vet $90 for each dog. So it was $270 for a dog passport, which doesn't even look like a passport. It's just a piece of paper. And it basically states their name, their um, the time of their rabies shot, and that they are and that the vet is certifying that they are healthy to travel. You need to have these. They might not ask for that, but they probably will. And you should make several copies as well as have their rabies shots certification. In addition, they might ask for that. So I got those and I made plenty of copies because coming to Canada and then coming back, they will ask for that. At this point, you probably want to go to the doctor, make sure that you are healthy. If you have any aches and pains and toothache, um, make sure you take care of that. Of course, I didn't do any of it because um, that's how I am. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be okay, but you should do that. About a month before, definitely make sure your bill, your bills are paid. If you are paying everything automatically, which is what I'm doing, then it's great. If you have to send in checks or you have to pay your rent, things like that, then you need to make sure you take care of it ahead of time. You also want to call your credit card companies and make sure that they know that you will be traveling because a lot of them are really good about making sure that nothing happens, no fraudulent activity. And if all of a sudden they see a charge in Washington or Canada, they will probably decline it and then they'll call me and then it's just a hassle. So they might even freeze your account. So in this case, you just call them, make sure everything is okay. And also locate your passport. I mean, do this before a month. You definitely want to do it about three months before and make sure your passport is not expired and it's not going to expire through your trip. And if it is, you need to renew it. It does take about six weeks and if it's expired, then it's a huge hassle. At this point, definitely before a month, make sure that you figure out what you will do with your cars. If you have any at home, are you parking them on the street or in the garage? I only have my one truck, so that's no problem. And if you're going to have anybody watch over your house, and I have that taken care of, as well as your mail. You can have the post office hold it because one month is a long time. A month before, at the latest, you also want to do a test run on on your camping trip. So what I mean by that is go camping in the way you are going to do it. You might have done camping before, but you will be taking more things now or you will be taking less. You need to figure out that it will fit in your truck or that it will actually be enough or you're not taking too much. So you want to do that a few times. I have never towed anything in my whole life and I bought a trailer that's almost 4,000 pounds and I had about four weekends to take it out camping and just my luck, it was raining almost every weekend. So out of the four times, it was two times. During this time, I set down both of my trips and I just sat and thought about everything that I might need to take. I already had all these ideas, but actually being here, using things, I came up with all sorts of things that will make the trip even better, um, either more convenient or just things that I should have thought about anyways. I also had to figure out how my dogs would sleep. So what I came up with, and this worked twice, and I know it's a good plan. I did not want them to come in my trailer. It's too many dogs, too much dog hair. And also you need to figure out how you will be transporting have them. Put tarp on top of both of the both of the crates so that they're not, you know, sitting in the sun. And then in the evening, what I decided, I'm going to put all three dogs into the big crate. And if it's cold or if it's raining, I have a big blanket I will put over them in addition to the tarp that's over it and then a huge big tarp just in case it's raining. And when I was up in the mountains last weekend, it snowed all night and I had the dogs like that and they were fine. They're German shepherds and they were okay with the cold and then they could cuddle or three of them. It's perfect for sleeping. So I feel pretty good about this. Sometimes I might let also sleep with me in the trailer. I did that last night. I don't know. I just feel better. I have never camped without him. And it seemed so strange just to be here by myself. And he just laid on the floor and it was fine. 
What I have also made was a binder to have everything in it. I usually don't do things like this, but it's just so many paperwork, so many different things you might want. So I have a binder and I have all these different sections in it. It has all the mechanical things and you are going to laugh, but I actually wrote down and typed up how to hook up my trailer and how to unhook it. And for the first few times, I actually had to look at it. And now, of course, I remember it, but you know what? I'm a girl. When girls are not very mechanical and it's just good to have it there. What if one day I get stressed out and I forget? It could happen. So I have that. I have all the warranties for anything that comes with the trailer. Might as well have it in one place. Then I have maps and locations. So what I did was I ordered on Amazon a few maps. I cut them up and put into sheet protectors so this way I can have them in my binder. Besides maps and locations, I have all the paperwork for the dogs. I have a whole section for that. And then I have another section for my daily plans and logs. So I will try to figure out what I'm doing as I'm going along, at least plan it one day ahead. And then I will track what I actually did, how many miles I drove and things like that. Make sure that none of your ATM cards or credit cards are expiring anytime soon. So you want to check on that a few months before. And finally, the last minute things, you want to make sure that you have enough cash. You have double checked on everything. You have everything set aside. You're not leaving anything home. I mean, worst case, you could buy it, but this is already expensive and I'm trying not to spend any more money than I have to. Make sure everybody knows where you're going, when you're coming back. It is a very good idea to stay in touch with friends and family, at least one person as an, emer as an emergency backup. If they don't hear from you by a specified time every day, maybe every other day, just in case you have no cell phone service, they can make the appropriate actions. Especially if you're like me, you know, a girl and by herself, who knows what could happen? I mean, I'm not worried. I have three dogs with me and I'm sure everything will be fine, but some people are a lot more cautious. So these are my plans. I will have everything written down in the description. And just in case I realized later on, I left out something very important. Obviously, I can't change the video, but I can add it in the description box. So go ahead and take a look at it. I will also have this on my blog. I will post it as soon as I can. And of course, I will have all my pictures and videos and everything posted on my Instagram account. So you can follow me there to see what's going on. And my plan is to upload videos here on YouTube probably every other day because there will be lots of things going on and I can't even save too many things on my phone so might as well just upload them so stay tuned if you haven't subscribed then please do so and hit that hit that bell so that way you will stay updated and when I have a new video you get notified also at the end of this video go ahead and check out my sponsors I already have a few sponsors and contributors that are helping me along this trip so check out their youtube channels or their website or their instagram accounts so this is how i planned this trip i feel really confident about it i think i did everything even though most of it was in the last month or two i still got it done and i hope that i didn't forget anything here like i said before check the description below just in case I did forget something and then later on I added. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if I left something out. Just leave a comment or if you have any suggestions for anything. And like I said, stay tuned. I will be leaving on June 7th right after school. So I am super excited that is coming up real fast. So stay tuned and I will be uploading very shortly about California and Oregon and then Washington, Canada, and then Alaska. And on the way back, I'm coming through Canada, of course, but a little bit more towards east. And I'm going to hit Montana and Wyoming. And, Wyoming, and then I'm not even sure yet if it's Nevada or Utah. It depends at that point how fast I want to get home. I might be tired of it already. Who knows? Or 
I have more time and Utah is beautiful. I've been there before and there are still so many more things to see. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.